video number four. Welcome to my world. My name is Newton Okewoye. If you love my world, you will love me too. So, let's get to my world. In the past three videos, we talked about five of the laws. There are three to go, and I'm going to take care of those three today. If you understand all eight of them, then whatever question shows up, you can take care of it if you fully understand this. So let me quickly do a recap of the five laws that we already talked about. Firstly, before I do the recap, I want you to understand that exponent simply means mm -hmm, repeated multiplication. You just keep multiplying something by something, but you don't want to write so many times. So the shorthand way of writing it is writing it as an exponent. So instead of multiplying two by itself three times, two times two times two, you just go, why don't I write two with a small three on top? That small three is exponent, showing you how many times you're supposed to multiply three. Okay, so in this case, we just take a number. We don't know what number. We always use x. And the first law is that, number one, x to the power of a multiplied by x to the power of b will be x to the power of a plus b. That is the product rule, okay? If you're multiplying, you just add the exponents. The second one is the quotient law, that when you're dividing x raised to power a by x to power b, your answer should be x to the, to the power of the difference between these two, a minus b. You go to the third one, which says, if any number is raised to power zero, the number is one as long as that number is not zero itself. So we say x to the power of zero is always equal to one, no matter what x is, but x cannot be zero. That's the only exception. And I explained why it cannot be um, zero. And then we go to number four. It's a law that says when x is raised to a negative, a negative exponent, okay? x raised to power negative c equals one, over x to the power of c. So this c could be 1, could be 2, could be 3, could be anything, okay? And then we go to the very last one, number 5, which tells us that x to the power of a fraction, so let's say we have 1 over c, instead of negative c, we have 1 over c, what we get is the c root of x. So if c is 2, it would be the square root. If c is 3, it would be the cube root. If c is 4, it would be the fourth root. So these are the five that we already explained. So I'm just going to uh, write the next three. The next one will be the power of a power, okay? So this is fraction exponent, negative exponent, zero exponent. This is the quotient rule, and this is the product rule. So the next one will be the power of a power. Mm. So it's raised to a power then it is then raised to another power. So if you have number six will be x to the power of a, then raised to the power of b, that would be equal to x raised to power a times b. So this is what I'm going to explain today, number five. And then one more, um, number six rather, number seven would be x to the power of a, and then you have another number that has the same thing but it's not x, it's y to the power of a. So different bases, the same exponent, the rule says, just put the two together, multiply them, and retain the exponent. Okay, and then the last one is just like this, but it's the division form. That is eight, that is x over x to the power of a divided by y to the power of a is simply, you generate a fraction and retain the exponent too, sorry exponent is a so basically these are the remaining three you need to know it's important that you understand how to apply them what it means and you it's important also that you try to remember them because some questions will be so complex you can't really expand the multiplication you have to know the rules that apply to it so if you remember all of these I want you to take a good look at it if you remember all of these you will be happy. No, you will be happier because I know you're happy already. So I'm going to erase all of these and start with these three. And that'll be the focus of today's video. If you're ready for it, I am ready. However, I would like to encourage you to please press the like button to share this video 
and to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so when I upload the next video, you will know and get notifications. Thank you very much for being with me and let's quickly get down to this one. So, we're going to apply this rule number six. So what you have is a number has been written as an exponent and then it is raised to another power. We wanna try and see what that really means. This is what it means. We'll take an example. Let's say we take two to the power of two, then we raise that to the power of three. This law says our answer is supposed to just be two to the power of two times three, two multiplied by three. So that should be two to the power of six. This is what the law says we should do. But let's test and see if it is right. Two to the power of two is essentially 2 times 2. But we're supposed to do this three times. So it's 2 times 2 to the third power, which if we write out will be 2 times 2. Then we do it again. We multiply by 2 times 2. Then we do it one more time. 2 times 2. So if you have, you have this, you have this, you have this. At the end of the day, you have two in six places, which is what you have here. So instead of taking your time to write everything out, just multiply. So it's two times two, that's what's inside here, out there. If you decide to follow this, you're gonna have to write it like this, like this, and eventually get two in six places, which you could have gotten by simply multiplying two by three. One more example. 3 raised to power 4 raised to power 1 half. If you follow this rule, your answer will be 3 to the power 4 times 1 over 2, which is 3 to the power of 2. So your answer is three times three, which gives you nine. But let's say we try to work this out. Three to the fourth power will be three times three times three times three, raised to power one half. Three multiplied by itself four times is 81, raised to power one over two. Remember, when you have a fraction exponent, you're talking about the square root, if it is a 2. So what is the square root of 81? Remember, this writes as the square root of 81 is 9. And that's the same thing as this. So the rule will always work. Whether you take the rule or you decide to expand the question out itself, you'll always get your answer. But the good thing is, the faster, the better. So, there are two people, they know how to solve the problem accurately. They both get the answer right. But one person needs five minutes. The other person needs five seconds. The one that is preferred in this world where everything is faster is the one that knows the faster way, yet acceptable way to do it. So you want to learn the rules, it will save you because there are times where you just don't have the ability to break it down like this. Let me give you one more example and we'll move on to the next rule. So remember, we're still on rule number six. We're still on this rule. So let's say you get a question that says that's five. Uh, let's say, 5 raised, 5 raised to the power 0 0.1, 5 raised to the power 0 
raised to power 20. So the first thing is there is no way you'll be able to do this. 5 raised to power 0 0.1. I don't even know what that is. But the person who gave you the question knows if you know the rule, you're supposed to first multiply this by this and get an answer. So if we apply the rule, this will be 5 to the power of 0 0.1 multiplied by 20. Okay, we'll multiply these two together. Your answer will be 5. 0 0.1 times 20 will give you 2. So what is 5 squared? That's 25. So knowing the rule is a very major thing. So don't take it for granted because there are some questions you can't break down. Okay, so that's how that works. We're going to solve some questions in the future that will help us remember all of these rules. I'm going to move away from rule number six. We're moving to rule number seven. Okay, so for rule number seven, what you have is... So, number seven. It says, when the bases are different, but the powers are the same, just retain the power and multiply the bases when you're multiplying. And when you're dividing, that's for eight. When you're dividing, retain the power, just do what you're doing, retain the power. Do what you're doing, retain the power. Do what you're doing, multiply, retain the power. Don't add, don't subtract the powers, just retain one of them because it's exactly the same thing. Let's see what that means. So let's say you have two to the third power. I'm gonna to use to the second power. Let's use a smaller number. So let's say two to the second power multiplied by three to the second power. See, in this case, you can't apply the product law because the two bases are not the same. They're different. However, if you look up, this and this are the same. It's important that you recognize that. You're not applying rule number one or any other rule. The rule you're applying at this time is this rule. The bases are different. So you retain the power, which is two, and you perform the operation of two times three. Your answer is gonna be six squared, which gives you 36. Let's see if this rule is correct. What is two squared? That's two times two, it gives you four. Multiply by what is three squared? That's three times three, that's nine. What is 4 times 9? It is straight 36, which is the same thing as what you have here. So this rule always works, and it's important that you know what to do. So uh, let's take another example. Let's say the question requires that you do 2 raised to power 3 multiplied by y raised to power 3. It's the same thing. You multiply 2 by y. You put it in parentheses and you write 3. Um, it will be wrong for you to write 2y raised to power 3 because the way this is, you're only raising the y to power 3. You're not considering the 2. Or you could find the value of 8, of 2 to be 8, 2 to the third power rather, to be 8, and then you say 8y. So if you did this, now this is correct, because this is the same thing as 2 to the third power, that's 8, and then this y is y to the third power, and that's y to the third. So it's either you write your answer this way, or you write it this way. Okay, when we practice some questions in another video, not this one, then we will get to that. I'm going to do a bunch of maybe between 20 and 30 questions in a long video, just solving them and explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing in each case. Uh, so for number eight, like I said, number eight is just like number seven. It's just like this case. In this uh, case, you are doing division. So let me show you. Now, this is the one that is trickier than this one. This one is more straightforward. This one could be really tricky. Let's see what you do. Um, so I'm going to erase this. Okay, so um, example for rule eight. 
So let's say you have a question that says, what is, um, six raised to power three divided by three raised to power three. You know, some people will try to multiply six by itself three times. Say six times six times six. The answer to that is 216. And then they do three times three times three. You get 27. Let's just do that, okay? So you have this to be um, six times six times six over three times three times three, okay? Um, well, if you're smart, you can cancel this, or you just write 216 over 27. Then they go through the pain of trying to simplify this fraction to get the answer. Why don't you apply this rule that says, because the powers are the same, um, I'm just going to write 6 over 3 and raise it to power 3. What is 6 divided by 3? That's going to be 2 raised to power 3. What is 2 to the third power? That's 2 times 2 times 2. It gives me 8. That's the simplification of this. So you see that it's better to know the rules. It makes things a lot easier. Sometimes these rules go from here to here. Sometimes they actually go from here to here. You have to know which one you're dealing with. One more example for this rule, and we will be fine. So, example two. You get a question that says 18 over the square root of 18 divided by the square root of 2. What? I don't know the square root of 18, and I don't know the square root of 2. Um, why don't we write it as exponents? Remember, the square root of 18 is 18 raised to power 1 half. The square root of 2 is 2 raised to power 1 over 2. If you apply this rule, you're simply saying 18 over 2 raised to power 1 over 2. And when you follow the process, what is 18 over 2? It's 9 over 1 raised to power 1 over 2. When you raise any number to power 1 over 2, it simply means you're taking the square root. That's where we came from. So this is the square root of 9. Uh, square root of 9 equals 3. That's one way to solve it. See, now that we've gone through all the rules, I can show you many other ways to solve this. Finally, let me just show you what I would have done because I would not have come back to the square root sign. What I would have done is to write this. I would have said 9 to the power of 1 over 2 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 2 raised to power 1 over 2 because 9 is 3 squared. Now I go back and I apply the rule number 6. You remember that rule? You just multiply these two. So I took this back from being just an integer to an exponent, an expression as an exponent. And then I will multiply 2 by half. If you multiply 2 by half or if you divide 2 by 2, you get 1. So my answer is 3 to power 1, which is 3. Now you know your laws of exponents. Don't play with them. Don't joke with them. Don't stop learning either. Because those who stop learning have stopped living. I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy your day.